Pop kind of dropped a bombshell. A lot of people are freaking out about it. I was scrolling through Facebook all night and I was like, yo, I'd love to make a video explaining what's going on so we can all just get on the same page a little bit, breathe a little bit, relax a little bit, all right? Now, I have had a ton of my cars tuned. I've even ran a Cobb access port and a ton of Cobb products on my Focus ST, but I'm here to admit, I'm by no means an expert on tuning and all this subject matter, but that's why I reached out to some people that are in the industry and are directly affected by this entire situation going on. My goal here is to give a broad overview of what's happening so you can better understand on how to move forward with your build. Before we get into it, don't forget though, wheels, tires, and suspension over at fitmentindustries.com. Also, we're giving away a set of Anovia Forge three-piece wheels. So you can get entered just by picking up this shirt or a hoodie or a poster. So make sure to check that out because winning three-piece wheels is awesome. You get to customize them, do whatever you want. Now that the plugs are out of the way, let's get into this. First thing I'm gonna say is take a deep breath in and let it out. You're good. You know that time you traded a guy your armor and he was going to trim it over at Verrock Bank and then he logged out? That was worse than this, I promise. Now, every platform is affected by this, but the biggest ones right now are Subaru and Nissan. If you missed the announcement, Cobb came out with their Project Green Speed. Now this is basically a cool way of saying because uh, basically anything that's emission related, Cobb is removing from their access port and their tunes. That's your Catalyst downpipes, TGV deletes, EGR deletes, secondary air injection deletes, basically all that stuff that us as car people say, hey yo, I don't need that and then we yeet it out of our cars. The EPA is cracking down on it. And a quick disclaimer here, because I saw a ton of people getting mad at Cobb directly. This is more the EPA cracking down on car enthusiasts and aftermarket modifications. This isn't new. Literally a year ago, we made a video called So You Want to Make Car Mods Illegal. You know, sometimes the EPA is the equivalent of that dad that gets up at 530 in the morning every Saturday morning to do chores that you already did during the week and to make it unnecessarily loud just so that you know that they're there. And that covered a lot about this. But there are reasons some people are upset, and rightfully so, with Cobb announcing this. The announcement was somewhat abruptly made by Cobb. There's people who were literally in the middle of a tune and their software was getting locked. There's people who literally just bought flex fuel kits from Cobb, and now at the moment, they're, they're paperweights. People who bought access ports and now literally have no use for them other than to just monitor some of the gauges. No, flex fuel. No, TGV, EGR, no, turbo brakes, no. But overall, Cobb wasn't fully like, this is funny, let's just cancel all of our tunes. Their hand was being forced and they needed to consider not only their business, but their employees and what the future of the company looked like. I guarantee this wasn't an easy decision, but one that needed to be made. And think of your favorite tuning company because they're probably coming up next. I talked to Chris, the CEO over at Panda Motorworks, a local Midwest tuning shop for enthusiasts that specialize in installing performance parts and tuning your cars. And he told me Cobb cut the cord. Literally people were tuning and the software crashed. Do I think this caused frustration? 100%, but let's be real. What would you do if the EPA came knocking and your entire operation that thousands depend on was just I'm sure this cutthroat approach was far from an easy one to swallow. As a gold dealer with Cobb, we have watched them try to adapt to the ever-changing EPA guidelines for years, and this was far from normal for them. And I think that sums it up perfectly. I also wanted to give a huge shout out to Smedia. I watched his entire live stream and it gave me such a better understanding of what was happening. And he has all the nitty gritty details. So if you wanna give that a watch, he answers a lot more specific questions. Also, I think he just uploaded a YouTube video too. I haven't got a chance to watch that, but I'm sure that has even more information. I'll leave a link to those in the description. The biggest thing I took away from his live stream and basically the info you want to know is if your car is already tuned with a TGV delete and everything else, all the emissions stuff, there's nothing to stress. Well, unless you're rebuilding your car or modifying it further, if you need a new tune, it's kind of going to be an issue. Also, if there's a current issue with your current map, Cobb won't be helping with that. They're, they're stopping that. If you're using an OTS tune, OTS stands for off the shelf tune, you're fine. This is more for custom tunes and people going for that big power. Another thing is I believe there's like a two week grace period for tunes at the time I'm writing the script. By the time this video goes up, there probably won't be a lot of time, but I guess this was Cobb's two week notice, so to speak. So yes, 
this is a crappy situation, but it's not the end of the world. And there's plenty of workarounds that may not be as convenient, but can do the same job. I also asked Chris from Panda, what does this mean for people with access ports and tunes that went through Cobb? And he assured me, if your car is tuned and good to go, nothing. If you are waiting on mods to be installed for your tune, if they are defeat mods, then no one can tune them for you anymore. And you either have to live with a check engine light on or adapt and put non-defeat devices on your car and see that tuners like us can still give you what you're looking for. If you have a flex fuel kit, all is not lost. Just a little pain currently that is having two separate maps versus just one. Yes, it's not ideal, but it can still make the same power and a few extra minutes to switch the maps is all that it takes. Cobb has confirmed, like mentioned above, compliant fixes for these struggles, but R&D is not an overnight process and it will take some time. So what I'm getting from that is a lot of us are truly fine for now. This is mostly affecting the people that are going for the bigger power, like I said before, and doing deletes opposed to us just doing bolt-on modifications. One thing I'd recommend is maybe considering just doing a high flow cat for your next downpipe. Depending on what your build is going for, and if you care about check engine lights, you can maybe get away with a cat list. But for people running OTS or off-the-shelf tunes, the changes you'll see are very minimal. Just a a little bit in the horse part, slightly. Now, my buddy Matt Wirtz, who's made an appearance here on the Fitment channel and is a friend of the channel, I knew would be a bit more affected about this since he's in the middle of doing some wild stuff with his STI. I reached out to him and for a little context, he pulled the motor on his STI and is planning bigger turbo along with running Cobb's flex fuel kit and access port. He said, it hits me hard because of the delays and choosing to go up in power. Sounds like I'll bite the bullet with a standalone and wait for Cobb's update to fix the flex fuel stuff so I can tune it right. Until then, I'll cry over my AP and flex fuel kit that are worth nothing and swallow the $1,500 for the ECU and just keep working at it. See, so these are the people that are upset and rightfully so. Two weeks isn't much time, especially for a build like Matt's and he's not going to be able to make the deadline and is being forced to pivot to a new tuning option. A lot of people are upset right now because a lot of the stuff that was available right up until this announcement was available right up until this announcement and kind of screwed some people out of it. Subaru isn't the only one though. Nissan with the big horsepower builds are going to take a hit now that speed density tuning will no longer be a thing through Cobb. What this is in a broad term is moving the main ECU input from the MAF sensor and replaces it with pressure in the intake manifold. Cobb says because the speed density tuning system once implemented cannot be reverted to stock or removed from the ROM, and this system indirectly alters certain OBD diagnostic tests, we have removed this feature from our updated software systems. Again, I think the main message here is high horsepower builds will be taking the grunt of it. If you currently have a tune from Cobb or an access port, you're currently 100% fine. It's just if you need a revision to your tune or you were going to continue to mod your build, you might now be affected. You can still go buy access ports. You can still get tunes. This is not the end of tuning as we know it, like some people are acting on Facebook. It's just a couple backwards steps in the process. I want to end this video with something Chris from Panda said that I don't think could be said any better. Change is coming and with force. This has been something I have watched the last nine years in the business and we have done our best to adapt where others have not. If you truly care about this, do not attack the companies doing everything they can to keep this alive and be able to modify cars. With that said, it will cost more to modify your car, but you still will be able to, and the more help we get from our customers and fans, the more we can push positive change. So support your local tuner and don't take EPA changes out on them. Let's keep making dope cars. Big shout out to Chris from Panda Motor Works, Matt Wirtz, and Smedia for helping me make this video and get the information squared away. If you have more questions, make sure to check out Smedia's content or drop a comment down below and we'll make sure to answer it the best we can. But the big message here is we can still tune our cars. There are just some backward steps in this and the EPA is cracking down on it. We'll talk to you later. Thank you.